This week, the Biden administration declared monkeypox a public health emergency. So what does this mean and how can you keep yourself and your family protected? Joining us live to help answer some of the questions that we have tonight is Dr. Amy Crawford Fauche, family physician at Allegheny Health Network. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course. So first of all, what exactly does a public health emergency mean in context of this monkeypox situation or any other um, you know, public health concern? And uh, do people need to be concerned about this? Sure. So the public health emergency designation basically allows the government to more easily allocate funds and resources to help solving the problem. So uh, it was previously uh, uncommon until COVID. So uh, this shows us that we're taking it seriously and we're trying to do things, we mean the health, the medical community to mitigate and prevent spread. Yeah, and, and of course, people are, you see it on all over social media and just conversations that people are having amongst themselves. People are pretty worried, I'd say, about this right now. Do they need to be afraid for any reason? So I think like any sort of communicable disease, people should be aware of how it can be spread and see what kind of behaviors and activities you engage in that you can change to minimize that. So I tell people monkey pox is a pox virus similar to chicken pox, but it's actually spread, it's much harder to spread compared to the chicken pox of my childhood and, and harder to spread than COVID. So there are many things that people can do to minimize their risk. Now, first of all, we're talking close contact for a prolonged period of time. Is that how Correct. monkeypox is spread? That's, ex that's exactly right. The most common way it's spread is from actually touching or coming in contact with the blisters or the lesions of the actual infection. And that is either touching it directly or touching clothes that have been in, t in direct contact. And it typically takes a lot of that contact. There might actually be some spread through respiratory droplets, but again, you've gotta be close to that person for probably three hours or more. Okay, now symptoms, will you start noticing, I, I know I've, I've read um, you may experience flu-like symptoms or something at first, is that a part of this? I mean, how might you know that you, perhaps you actually have contracted this virus? Sure, so I think probably your first clue is that you may have been in touch, in contact with someone or in a situation where you were at high risk of being in contact with someone. And then typically with seven to 21 days, it can pay, take quite a while, um, fever, chills, body aches, and swollen lymph nodes. Um, and then after that, you might develop these blisters and it can be throughout your body, but more commonly, it's actually just in a few places, maybe on the face, maybe in the genital area. Now, also, I've just, I know we're sort of, um, at least here in the U.S., we're sort of just seeing the beginning of this, and it's just now mm -hmm. being labeled a public health crisis, but um, are you able to speak to what it's like after the healing is done? I know, just in, in terms of scarring, I was curious about that. I've seen some people have pitted scars. Does that go away? You know, I don't know for sure, but if it's similar to chicken pox, that there are, there is that risk of some scarring. Okay. And then lastly, do you just have any quick tips uh, for the public? Because obviously vaccines aren't widely available yet, um, just on mm -hmm. how they can protect themselves and make sure that, you know, they, they don't come down with this. Sure. So avoid close contact with people who may have it. I mean, and that, and it's generally close sexual or physical contact. So to be aware of your behaviors in that regard. Um, if you are sick, if you have symptoms of fever, swollen glands, and stay away from other folks. You know, I think that is, um, that's the, the baseline. There's no way to test for the disease unless you actually have the blisters that we can test. So if stay, you know, call your doctor and isolate until you can get further evaluation. They're telling me to wrap, but I do have my produ producer, Ashley, don't kill me. I just wanted to ask one more question. Um, well, how do you tell if, you know, you could have like a regular zit or something versus it's monkey pox? Is there a way you can differentiate that? Well, you don't usually have a fever, you know, or other kinds of symptoms with acne, okay. but there are other blistering illnesses. So if you have a concern, call your primary care physician. Sure. All right. And now we officially are out of time, but I really okay. do appreciate you for taking the time to walk through this with us. And... Um, have a great weekend.